Breaking news! In Israel, something amazing just happened. The weather suddenly turned cold and snow suddenly fell from the sky. It's strange that a desert country has heavy rain and snowfall. Extremely strong rains have caused many cities to flood. These events seem to be bringing vitality to this barren land. But this is really happening here. In today's video, let's talk about this suspicious event. What is happening with Israel? Do these things contain any secrets? Is this a sign of the return of God? Please watch the entire video to get answers to these questions and also not to miss the shocking truth that I will reveal at the end of the video. Why does God send rain to this land? Delving into its deep-rooted symbolism and the geographical marvels that shape this sacred land. In Israel, rain is more than just a meteorological event. It's a spiritual blessing, a reminder of dependence on a higher power. As visitors to this land often notice, rain over the summer is virtually unheard of. It's during the Feast of Tabernacles that prayers for rain begin in earnest, emphasizing the importance of water conservation and God's provision. But why did God choose Israel, this little piece of real estate, as the stage for such divine interventions? Unlike regions blessed with abundant water sources like the Nile or the Euphrates, Israel relies heavily on sporadic rainfall. This deliberate choice places Israel in a position of complete dependency on the skies and ultimately on the one who controls them. In the Old Testament, we see God's prophets exercising control over the heavens, sealing them at God's bidding or calling forth rain as a blessing. Drought becomes a form of divine punishment while rain signifies God's favor and provision. It's a powerful way of getting Israel's attention, a reminder of their covenant relationship with the divine. Rare snow and rain in Israel transformed the desert into a land teeming with life. Mount Hermon, with its strategic significance and as the source of the Jordan River, plays a pivotal role in this narrative. Covered in snow, it feeds into the Sea of Galilee, symbolizing abundance and renewal. Mount Hermon holds not only geographical importance but also spiritual significance. It's mentioned in various ancient texts, from the Hebrew Bible to the Book of Enoch and the New Testament. Its three distinct peaks, each about the same height, cover an area that captures precious precipitation in an otherwise dry region. The runoff from Mount Hermon's snow-covered slopes feeds springs and rivers, sustaining fertile plant life below. Vineyards, oak, pine, and poplar trees thrive, a testament to the life-giving properties of water in this arid landscape. But Mount Hermon is not just a source of life, it's also a symbol of geopolitical tension. Located at the border between Syria and Lebanon, it overlooks Israel and holds strategic importance in the region. Its altitude makes it Israel's primary early warning system, earning it the nickname the Eyes of the Nation. In short, rain and snow in Israel are not merely natural phenomena but divine manifestations of God's providence and sovereignty. They serve as reminders of dependence on the divine and the intricate interplay between the spiritual and the physical in this sacred land. As we marvel at the wonders of Mount Hermon and the blessings of precipitation, let us reflect on our own dependence on the divine and our stewardship of the resources entrusted to us. What is Mount Hermon that is so important? The spiritual significance of rain and snow in the context of Mount Hermon a majestic mountain with profound biblical importance. Mount Hermon stands as the highest peak in ancient Israel, its snow-capped summits reaching over 9,000 feet above sea level. Known by its Arabic name, Jabal el Shik, meaning snowy mountain, Mount Hermon's towering presence has captured the imagination of believers for centuries. In biblical times, Mount Hermon was referred to as Syrian by the Sidonians and Sinir by the Amorites, names likely alluding to its resemblance to a gleaming breastplate with rounded snow-topped crests glistening in the sunlight. This mountain held significance on multiple fronts in the biblical narrative. Firstly, Mount Hermon marked the northern limits of the Promised Land, a territory conquered by Joshua as the Israelites entered into their inheritance. It also formed the northern boundary of the territory inherited by the half-tribe of Manasseh and served as the northern border of Israel as a whole. Throughout history, Mount Hermon has been a site of spiritual pilgrimage, drawing worshippers to its isolated heights. Ancient sanctuaries, now in ruins, dot the mountain's peaks, slopes, and base, attesting to its sacred significance in various religious traditions. In Judges 3, 3, the mountain is referred to as Baal Hermon, signifying its association with divine worship. Despite its pagan associations, 
Mount Hermon also served as a place of encounter with the one true God, where rare rain and snow were seen as spiritual blessings, reminders of divine providence and dependence on the Almighty. The biblical significance of rain and snow in Israel is deeply intertwined with Mount Hermon's spiritual symbolism. These natural phenomena serve as foreshadowings of future events, as prophesied in Zechariah 14 and other scriptures, including the splitting of the Mount of Olives and the flowing of living water from Jerusalem. God's redemptive plan for humanity was revealed through Israel, despite ongoing conflicts and struggles. The Mount of Olives, a symbol of hope in Jesus as the Savior who brings peace to Jerusalem and the world, stands in contrast to Mount Hermon's rugged terrain. As we reflect on the spiritual lessons drawn from Mount Hermon and its associated weather patterns, let us remember the importance of dependence on God's provision and the fulfillment of His promises in our lives. Rain and snow in Israel serve as tangible reminders of God's faithfulness and His ongoing work in the world. The Prophecy Zechariah 14 paints a vivid picture of a future day known as the Day of the Lord, a time when Christ Himself will return to earth. This prophecy foretells that on that day, His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, causing the mountain to split in two from east to west, forming a great valley. This monumental event signifies the culmination of God's plan for redemption and judgment. As the Lord stands on the Mount of Olives, it symbolizes His authority and victory over all His enemies. This prophecy, therefore, points directly to the second coming of Christ, a time when He will return in power and glory to establish His kingdom on earth. The opening verses of Zechariah 14 speak of the future plundering of Jerusalem by its enemies, with all nations gathering against the city. This catastrophic event will result in devastation, with half of Jerusalem's citizens fleeing while the other half remains. This scenario reflects the turmoil and tribulation that will precede Christ's return, as prophesied in various scriptures. As Zechariah describes, the Lord Himself will go forth to engage these opponents in battle, highlighting the divine intervention that will ultimately bring about His victory. This battle on the Mount of Olives serves as a pivotal moment in history, signaling the defeat of God's enemies and the establishment of His reign. The parallel passage in Revelation reinforces this narrative, depicting the cataclysmic events that will unfold during the end times. The severe earthquake described in Revelation, accompanied by thunder, lightning, and hailstones, mirrors the splitting of the Mount of Olives foretold by Zechariah. This earthquake, attributed to the Messiah's second coming, signifies the culmination of God's judgment upon the earth and the defeat of all opposing forces. Christ, as the victor, will reign supreme, bringing an end to Israel's enemies and casting the beast and false prophet into the lake of fire. The Meaning of the Mount of Olive Nestled in the heart of Jerusalem, this iconic hill has witnessed countless pivotal moments in biblical and modern history, serving as a silent witness to the unfolding of God's redemptive plan. The Mount of Olives, the second most famous mountain in Jerusalem, holds a unique place in the narrative of Scripture. Its significance is deeply rooted in the divine purpose that God chose to reveal through the land of Israel, situated at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Despite its modest size, Israel has played a central role in God's redemptive plan, with Jerusalem serving as its capital, often referred to as the City of Peace. However, peace has been a fleeting reality for Jerusalem, as it has endured numerous battles and conflicts throughout history. The Mount of Olives stands as a poignant reminder of this tumultuous past, separating the sacred Temple Mount from the barren Judean desert. Yet, amidst the strife and turmoil, the Mount of Olives has remained a beacon of hope and spiritual significance. It derives its name from the olive groves that adorn its slopes, which have served the city by providing oil for anointing Israel's kings and temple priests. Throughout the pages of Scripture, the Mount of Olives emerges as a place of prayer and divine encounter. King David, during a time of great distress, ascended the hill barefoot in prayer, seeking refuge from the wrath of his son Absalom. Later, King Solomon would use the mount for idol worship, erecting high places for foreign gods. In the prophetic visions of Ezekiel and Zechariah, the Mount of Olives takes on even greater significance. These prophets foretold future judgment on Israel, as well as its eventual restoration and regathering from exile. Zechariah specifically identifies the Mount of Olives as the place where the Messiah will return, signaling the culmination of God's redemptive plan. Jesus himself frequented the Mount of Olives during his earthly ministry, using its secluded slopes as a place of retreat for prayer and teaching. It was here in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus experienced profound anguish 
and was comforted by an angel before his betrayal and crucifixion. The Mount of Olives also served as the backdrop for significant events in the final week of Jesus' life. On three separate occasions, he visited the Mount, each time bearing profound significance. During his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Zechariah by riding into the city on a humble donkey. Later, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus grappled with the weight of his impending sacrifice, offering prayers to the Father amidst his disciples. It was here that he prepared himself for the events that would soon unfold, culminating in his arrest, trial, and crucifixion. Finally, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives for a final time, where he was apprehended by his adversaries. This hill, steeped in history and prophecy, became the stage for the most pivotal moment in human history, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Following his resurrection, Jesus ascended to heaven from the Mount of Olives, promising to return in the same manner. This promise echoes the prophecy of Zechariah, which foretells of his triumphant return to the very place from which he ascended. The Mount of Olives serves as a poignant reminder of God's faithfulness throughout history and His unchanging promises for the future. It is a symbol of hope and redemption, where past defeats will give way to future triumphs. As we reflect on the significance of the Mount of Olives, let us be reminded of the enduring hope that it represents. Just as Jesus overcame death and ascended to heaven from this sacred hill, so too will He return in glory to establish His kingdom on earth. In the words of Acts 1.11, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Let us eagerly await his return, knowing that he will reign victorious over all his enemies and bring peace to a troubled world. The Salvation In the 13th century, pilgrims initiated a tradition during the Feast of Sukkot, where they ascended to the summit of the Mount of Olives and circled its peak in a vibrant procession of song and celebration. Each day for the first six days of the feast, pilgrims would complete one circle around the summit, mirroring the ancient temple service where priests circumambulated the altar once a day during the seven-day feast. This ritual symbolized a spiritual journey and a seeking of divine favor, echoing the prayers of the Jewish people throughout history. On the seventh and final day of the feast, known as Hosanna Rabbah, meaning, Save us, we pray, O Lord, pilgrims intensified their prayers for salvation. They encircled the summit seven times, echoing the actions of the priests who circled the temple altar seven times during this climactic day. In unison, Jews around the world and pilgrims atop the Mount of Olives cried out for salvation, invoking the words of Psalm 118, 25, 26. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Traditionally, while the Day of Atonement is regarded as the Day of Judgment for individual sins in Jewish tradition, Hosanna Rabbah is believed to be the day when God finalizes His judgment on each person. It is a day of fervent prayer and earnest seeking of divine mercy and grace. Indeed, the anticipation and longing for salvation expressed on Hosanna Rabbah find their ultimate fulfillment in Jesus the Messiah. As the trumpet call of God resounds, the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. This momentous event, described in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, holds the promise of ultimate redemption and transformation. The dead in Yeshua will rise first, and then those who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we will be with the Lord forever. The Mount of Olives, with its rich history and sacred traditions, serves as a poignant backdrop for this profound hope of salvation and restoration. Just as pilgrims of old encircled its summit in prayer and supplication, so too do believers today lift their voices in anticipation of the Lord's return. As we reflect on the spiritual significance of rain and the timeless traditions observed on the Mount of Olives, let us be reminded of the steadfast faithfulness of God and the promise of His coming kingdom. May we eagerly await the day when Jesus the Messiah will return to the Mount of Olives, bringing salvation and judgment to all people. The Return of Jesus As we journey through the annals of prophecy woven intricately into the sacred texts of diverse religious traditions, we find ourselves immersed in a compelling narrative, a narrative that converges upon the revered grounds of the Temple Mount, where the promise of a rebuilt temple stands as a beacon of spiritual renewal and eschatological fulfillment. 
In both Christianity and Judaism, the vision of a third temple rising from the ancient dust ignites a profound sense of reverence and anticipation. It is not merely a physical edifice, but a symbol of divine presence and prophetic destiny, a testament to the enduring faith and hope of believers across millennia. The Gospel of Matthew echoes with the words of Jesus, who foretells tumultuous events preceding His second coming, yet amidst the chaos promises a triumphant return to the Mount of Olives. Here, on the eastern horizon of Jerusalem, His feet will once again tread the earth, signaling the dawn of a new era, an era of divine restoration and fulfillment. Revelation paints a vivid portrait of cataclysmic upheaval reshaping the landscape of Jerusalem, while Zechariah's prophecy envisions the Mount of Olives split asunder, paving the way for a new temple, a temple worthy of the divine presence that will descend upon the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. But the significance of this temple transcends mere architecture. It embodies spiritual renewal and divine sovereignty. Ezekiel's vision unveils intricate details of a millennial temple, where the glory of God will dwell among mortals, ushering in an age of righteousness and peace. Yet, amidst the ancient stones of the present-day Temple Mount, amidst the echoes of millennia of religious devotion and geopolitical strife, the fate of this sacred precinct remains uncertain, a focal point of competing narratives and irreconcilable claims. For Jews, it is the holiest site in Judaism, the site of the first and second temples, and the longed-for location of a third temple. Organizations such as the Temple Institute meticulously prepare for its reconstruction, keeping the flame of hope alive in the hearts of believers. For Muslims, however, the Temple Mount holds equal sanctity, enshrined as the site of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. Any alteration to this sacred space evokes profound apprehension and resistance, rooted in centuries of religious devotion and historical legacy. Amidst these tensions, the prophecy of a rebuilt temple assumes a heightened significance, casting its shadow across the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East. Its realization heralds not only the fulfillment of ancient scriptures, but a seismic shift in the spiritual and political dynamics of the region. Yet amidst the fervor of prophecy and the clash of competing narratives, there remains a glimmer of hope, a hope born of dialogue, reconciliation, and shared humanity. As the sun sets over Jerusalem, let us envision a future where the aspirations of all faiths find expression in a shared vision of peace and mutual respect. In the shadow of the Temple Mount, where the echoes of prophecy reverberate through time, let us transcend divisions and embrace the transformative power of unity and understanding. For in our shared humanity lies the promise of a future where the Temple Mount becomes not merely a site of contention, but a beacon of hope for all mankind. In the sacred verses and ancient artifacts, we encounter a tapestry interwoven with threads of divine judgment and the prophesied restoration of the temple in the twilight of time. The archaeological marvels uncovered beneath the venerable Dome of the Rock transcend mere relics. They are fragments of a cosmic puzzle, pieces of a grand design foreseen in prophecy. As we stand poised at the intersection of history and prophecy, these discoveries beckon us to look beyond the surface and delve into deeper understanding. They challenge us to reconcile the tangible evidence with the profound faith that resides within our hearts, seeking harmony between the material and the spiritual realms. In our quest for enlightenment, we are reminded that the ground beneath us holds more than mere soil and stones. It is a sacred repository of human endeavor and divine intervention. As we unearth the mysteries hidden within its depths, we may unlock the secrets to our collective destiny, buried within the annals of time. With each passing shadow cast over the Dome of the Rock, we find ourselves at a moment of reflection, a juncture where the revelations we've uncovered and the prophecies we've contemplated converge. They prompt us to turn inward and outward, to question and to seek amidst the sacred texts. In those ancient verses, we discover a promise, a guiding light illuminating the path forward. Jeremiah 29, 11 echoes through the ages, declaring, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This assurance transcends time, inviting us to perceive current events and discoveries not as harbingers of despair, but as markers along the divine journey. As we stand at this crossroads of history and prophecy, let us seize the opportunity to renew our faith, to strengthen our hope. Beneath the dome of the rock, amidst whispers of age-old mysteries, lies the assurance of a future, a future where understanding bridges faiths, where knowledge guides our paths. To you, our esteemed audience, 
I extend an invitation to join in this contemplation. Share with us your insights, your questions, your aspirations. How have these revelations stirred your soul? How have they deepened your reflections on the intricate interplay of human belief and divine promise? In the tapestry of our shared consciousness, let us ponder the imminent divine judgment and the prophesied restoration of the temple in the final days. Through myriad words and thoughts, let us navigate the labyrinth of prophecy and faith, seeking illumination amidst the enigma of ages past and future. As we come to the end of our time together, I want to thank you for joining us. It's been a journey filled with deep reflection and meaningful exploration. As we part ways, let's carry with us the lessons we've learned and the insights we've gained. May these moments of contemplation stay with us, guiding us in our own paths forward. Remember, we're all on this journey together. Let's continue to seek understanding, compassion, and hope in our shared experiences. Until we meet again, take care and be well. Goodbye for now and may peace be with you always. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe. Your support will be our motivation. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell to update the latest video from our channel. Hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye and God bless you.